Hey yo lads, nice Stanfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today looking at the B192 Newland, because um, I said I'd do that yesterday. Or technically still today for me, but for you guys it'll be yesterday. Uh, so yeah, the B192 Newland, it's a great little fighter really. It's a shame, it used to be considerably better, but during one of the patches when they changed all the sort of damage that it things do and what they prioritize and stuff specifically for the aircraft um it kind of like it got nerfed quite a bit it got a slight buff in the way that it attacks uh systems now but at the same time it's not amazing in that situation that's mostly due to the fact that in the current meta um things like battle cruisers and stuff you don't see too much of and this thing wants the primary uh, weapon systems and propulsion systems. And then with its uh, precision strike, it's going for you know super carriers. It's attacking those large targets. Um, super capitals, sorry. I said swear I said super carriers. Either way, super capitals. So um, it, it is in a bit of a situation where it's not as good as it used to be. However, it's still, you know, relatively viable to run in fleets. I believe Super Capitals, I think, still counts as cruisers as well. Uh, it's been a little bit while since I tested that. If someone can confirm that in the comments, uh, do let me know. But as a, um, a ship specifically designed around system damage, um, it does a pretty good job at system damage. So you can't really fault it in that aspect. It's a shame because before it actually did really quite okay anti-air and that was mostly because of its anti-aircraft missile system having some nice little buffs and stuff but we'll talk about that when we get round to it now it's only on a counter attack that the anti-aircraft missile system actually does anything so with that being said this is one of the type of ships that you will again i will say this for most um aircraft in the case of uh, you can pretty much ignore its um armor system to start off with and going straight into its main weapon system uh, so we are going straight into the main cannon in this situation we have 35 damage to hit 20 second duration two times five attacks per round with 15 second cooldown and a 12 second lock on time it's actually not too bad the lock on time's a little bit slow here i do like to try and speed that up um but yeah, you are specifically going to be running this to try and knock out the weapon systems of enemy ships. In the current meta, it's not a requirement to run Precision Strike. However, I do find having it is just a nice thing. You have quite a few slots here, six, to sort of, you know, fill up. The damage increases don't do too much. The attack interval is quite nice. You know, it, the hit rates are okay in this situation because against Frigate's Destroyers is going to be useful to it. Um... So yeah, there, there isn't you know too much that you can really pick up here. So you might as well pick up the precision strike in the off chance that you do run into someone running you know cruisers that are you know weaponized chimeras that kind of thing, or super capitals. You do run into the odd CTG every now and then. So having the nice little extra damage it gives uh, does actually work out quite nicely. However, I'd probably make it my last pick. So in order. I would be picking up the, uh, not the target selection time on the weapon. You can grab that on the uh, engine. Uh, I pretty certainly can. Yeah, target selection time there. So you can ignore it on the, uh, on the weapon, so you don't have to pick it up there, which is quite nice. So I do recommend here picking up the uh, one against, the hit rate against Frigate Destroyers first. That's its main priority, and in the current meta, we are seeing a lot of Frigate Destroyer. Uh, so... Works out quite nicely. That means you're going to be knocking out their weapon systems. In that case, you know, like things like Ruby IOs, which can deal decent damage. Reliots deal decent damage. Uh, so all of these, you know, Tauruses, etc. Uh, being able to hit those is going to be really useful. So picking up the hit rate is going to help you out a bit there. After that, again, I like picking up the reduced uh, attack interval that we can pick up here. It's going to help you out quite nicely. You can pick up two of those bringing you up to three slots already, leaving you with two more slots for the cooldown, and then moving on and picking up Precision Strike. There is, again, an argument for picking up the increased damage here, but it's not what I'd personally recommend. So, hit rate, two attack intervals, the two cooldowns, and your Precision Strike makes up your six slots, giving you like a nice little 
you know, balance flea. 35 damage per hit, it's not great. Again, like I said though, picking up 10% damage is only going to give it 3.5 damage per hit. It's just not worth it in my opinion. I tend to, you know, think of those, you know, 10% weapon damage buffs for specifically for, you know, big hitting uh, targets. Uh, they just, you know, you get more value out of it than you do, uh, say, reducing attack intervals and, uh, you know, increasing, uh, well, decreasing cooldown on weapons and stuff like that on these smaller weapon systems. So it's actually really quite nice for that. After that, because the anti-aircraft uh, missile system is, you know, specifically designed around counter-attack, I actually go into the propulsion system first, picking up one of the ship evasion and the reduced target selection time. There is an argument for running both of the reduced target selection time and using this as a semi sort of screen for your other uh, fighters, but I personally like having that extra little uh, system damage there, albeit I don't use this ship too often nowadays. After that, going into the missile system, this is where it used to be really good, is like, it's, you know, cheap to enhance and it has some really nice stuff here you can get double hit ray against fighters corvettes followed by picking up the 20 percent increased aerial damage uh which is actually giving you quite a bit because this does 60 damage so you know plus a 30 percent plus another 20 percent you're getting like a 50 percent increase uh damage per hit bringing you up to like uh 110 damage per hit on a missile and and you know it it fires pretty decently you've got uh, one attack per, uh, per round, a six second cooldown, and a 10 second lock on. So, this is one of the uh, incidents where I do actually quite like picking this up. And because it is counter attack only, you might as well pick it up. Uh, you can further increase the hit rate. I tend to ignore that. And I do take the uh, cooldown here because you've already got double hit rates here. Uh, and rather than picking up, you know, 10% hit rates against everything. I personally prefer picking up, you know, the 15% over it uh, just to give it a bit more oomph when it does need to counter-attack. And you can actually see this thing doing some okay anti-air damage. The problem is, you know, it gets prioritized and shut down very quickly. So you won't actually see too much out of it. After that, with the armor system, uh, personally, I do like picking up this... Uh, chance of being hit by missiles and torpedoes again and then picking up uh, double HP because at 4,290 uh, base armor, it's not going to get much of a HP buff at all. You bring it up to about 5,000 or thereabouts. So it's still going to die uh, a bit too rapidly uh, with you know just picking up the three and the extra dodge rate might help you out a little bit here. So that's it for the B192 Newland. It's seen better days, unfortunately. Um... It still does an all right job at, um, you know, hitting systems. Something to note with the systems as well as its primary is the weapon systems. Uh, so it'll be knocking out the main weapon systems, which is quite nice. And then it'll be knocking out propulsion systems, uh, which is also very nice because I can guarantee like a full kill on a ship. So it's, you know, it's still definitely within a usable space if you are going down that system damage route, especially if you want that propulsion system damage, uh, which uh, I personally value more than uh, primary weapon systems. Uh, if the ship's dead, primary weapon system's not firing anyway is my uh, view on that. Although, you know, knocking it out early obviously reduces the incoming damage. So there is an argument for saying the primary weapon system is potentially better by like making things costly to my enemy. Even if I lose the fight, if they're having to go back and rebuild half of their fleet, I've done my job. I've taken them off the front line. Uh, so that's my my thoughts about propulsion system uh, damage being pretty decent. So, B192 Newlands. Again, like I said earlier, seen better days, still usable though, specifically if you're going for system damage. Other than that, have a go on guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.